Hello Internet and welcome to this day in history for the 21st of October. Now, where are we? We are in 1805 and yes, I know we have been in the beginning of the 19th century quite a bit recently and yes, there are plenty of other stuff that has happened on the 21st of October. However, on this particular day in 1805 was the Battle of Trafalgar and since that's both important and I've already made a video about it, I can shill. This is absolutely something I will not hesitate even for a minute to talk about. So, Battle of Trafalgar, what was it? Well, it's one of the most famous battles throughout history. A combined French and Spanish fleet was very heavily defeated outside the coast of Spain by Vice Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson and his Royal Navy squadrons. And why was this so important? Well, it was important because with the other defeats that Napoleon had had at sea, it basically rendered Britain secure for the rest of the Napoleonic Wars. Napoleon had been gathering his grand army at Boulogne, just waiting for a chance to have his combined Spanish and French fleet move into the channel and disperse the British home defense fleets, allowing him to cross over with his grand army of about 400,000 men, with which he would have easily overrun Britain probably within a few months at the very most. Had Napoleon been successful at this, it's very probable that the Napoleonic Wars would have ended right there and then, because really, in many ways, the only thing that allowed the other members of the various coalitions against the Emperor to keep going was the fact that the British would keep paying them a lot of money. There is a reason why the gold pound coin at the time was known as the Cavalry of St. George, because Britain could not field that particularly big a field army. Even at its greatest in the Peninsula War, the British component of Wellington army was only about 50 to 60,000 men against 300,000 Frenchmen in what was for the French honestly a secondary theatre of war. So as you can imagine, Britain's primary part of the war was basically to finance it by sending various amounts of money to Austria, Prussia and Russia. However, at this particular point in 1805, Spain and France were still allied and Napoleon had his army and he was waiting for his combined fleet under Vice Admiral Villeneuve to arrive in the Channel, disperse the British squadrons and allow his army to cross. However, Villeneuve lost his nerve when he realized that Nelson was waiting for him and first fled across the Atlantic and then instead of moving into the channel as Napoleon had wanted, fled back to Cadiz in southern Spain before finally realizing, oh shit, he's going to send someone to replace me because I fucked up so I'll take the fleet out and try to do something at least, at which point Nelson caught him and in one of the most famous military tactics of the day, split his fleet formations into two and hammered into the French formation, destroying both it and the Spanish fleet almost completely. We are talking about one of the most one-sided military defeats ever on sea during the wood and sail era. There are many reasons why this battle was so complete. First of all, the Royal Navy was of course a sincerely professional and well-trained organization. Their men was highly motivated, they had strong morals, they were very very well led, as since the Royal Navy, unlike the British Army at the time, was crewed by officers who had moved up the chain of command through merit. In fact, in the Royal Navy you had to sit down and pass exams in order to at least move up to flag captain. Once you had to become an admiral, things were very bit different, of course, even then political games had to be played. But up until ship command, basically anyone could rise to that command. There are several instances where you even black former slaves have risen to captain rank in the British Navy at a time before slavery was abolished, honestly, in the British Empire, simply because the Royal Navy was very, very keen on making sure that they had the best men in the best positions. The French did not have that. The crew was plagued by illness. They had been at land for some time. They were demoralized by their long trip across the Atlantic, and the British simply completely outfought them. Now, we all know, of course, it cost the life of Nelson himself, but as he said when he lay dying, I have done my duty for England, and in fact he had. He had saved England from invasion by the French, he had saved them from defeat and occupation by the French, and he had basically, though somewhat long term, as it still took a decade, saved Europe from 
Napoleon's wishes to have France completely dominated. That was the Battle of Trafalgar. So yeah, I hope this has been of interest to you. Until next time, I have been the Sage, and I wish you all a very happy day.